We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-20s working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. Well, it's a warm, rainy summer evening here at Mason Dixon Acres. Not a lot to do outside, so instead, the project at hand is the front brakes on this 2012 Hyundai Sonata. This car actually belongs to my mom, and she took it in for safety inspection, and they failed her for front brakes. They told her that there is virtually zero pad material left. It's almost metal on metal. Gave her this horror story about her front brakes and tried to charge her for $400 worth of front brake work just for rotors and pads on her front two wheels. This car was at a dealership about two years ago and they tried to sell her the same story with her rear brakes. I got the parts on my own. I took the back wheels off and the pads had still approximately halfway life left. In the process, we also brought front pads and rotors for when we eventually would have to do the fronts. And I guess that time is now. We're gonna see if the service station actually is being truthful in their assessment. First step, as always, is to find a good jacking point. I always use where the suspension arm connects to the frame. That's always a sturdy point. Brakes are one of those jobs that it seems really intimidating at first, but once you do it like twice, it's just like changing oil. To get our caliper off here, we gotta get these two slide rail bolts out. This here, and this one under here. Once those are out, you can just slide the caliper right off. All right, here's the moment of truth. How do the pads look? This isn't even to the wear mark yet. It's certainly not metal on metal. The one on the other side is worse though. That is pretty close to the metal. For some reason this actually wore really unevenly. I don't know if you can tell, but there's, it's really tapered up here. And the back of the rotor is the same way. It matches this. Not really sure why it wore so unevenly, but it did. Oh, and if you're ever doing brakes, make a note of this. This is the wear tooth. This will start squealing once you wear your pads to the minimum thickness. Pay attention when you're reinstalling that you don't put two of these on the same rotor. I've done it before and they usually fit. It just needs to be one per rotor and it's usually on the inside. Don't make that mistake. In order to get the rotor off, your brake caliper mount has to come off. This is held on with two bolts here on the back. They're both 17 millimeter and they usually take a little bit more persuasion. Once you have those two bolts out, you can take your caliper mount off. Now it's time to get the brake rotor off. It's only held on by these two Phillips head screws. They're both too rusty to get with a regular screwdriver, so I'm gonna have to get my impact screwdriver. Now that the screws are out, it should pop off. I have to loosen it up with a hammer. Wow, this thing frosted. Here's a better view of the backside. You can see how unevenly worn it is. It's not very often, but I do agree with the service guys. This rotor needed to be replaced. Now we're about ready to put the new stuff on. One last thing is we have to compress this piston back into the caliper. That way we can fit the new thicker pads because remember this piston is out just as far as the, the old pads are worn, which is pretty worn. Before we force brake fluid back into the system by compressing that piston, we just want to take the lid off our brake master cylinder reservoir. That just allows any fluid in the system to raise back up without the worry of compressing air inside this. I typically use an old brake pad to bridge the hole in the piston and then I'll just crank in on a C-clamp and you can see it slowly will start compressing in. And we just go in as far as it seems reasonable to go. Once, it, once your clamp starts getting tight, you'll be able to feel it. Here's the old brake pad. There we go. 
It's nice and compressed in. It's going to fit on the rotor. Set that back there. These go on just like the old ones came off. I put a little dab of anti-seize on these to make sure they don't lock up again. I'm sure there's a torque spec for these, but I just use the standard German torque spec, which is called Gutentite. Put your hardware back in. The pads that I got actually didn't come with new hardware. They should, they usually do. Just like that. Make sure nothing's rubbing. Throw a little high temp grease on it. Just to help the edges of the brake pad slide in that groove. Try to avoid getting grease on the rotor when you're doing this. Then we can put the pads back in, making sure that our metal piece of hardware is on this back pad and that our wear indicator tooth is in the same position as it came off. Should just slide in there, no problem, right up against the rotor. Same deal up here. And then finally you can slide your caliper on. It should go on if it's compressed all the way. Just like that. Finish it off by putting your two 14 millimeter bolts back in. Remember to start lug nuts by hand, and if you're gonna use an impact to tighten them, do it first on a light setting in a start pattern, and then repeat on the final heavier torque setting. The same exact process is repeated on the other side, this time at turbo speed. This rotor gave me a little bit of extra grief. I actually had to heat it up with a torch in order to get it off the hub. The inside of this other one was in some really rough shape. Looks like it did fracture off some metal on that brake pad and it was getting grinded up in here for a little while. It is rusty. Not a good looking brake rotor at all. Another note, the fluid level in the brake reservoir is almost back up to the max after compressing the pistons back in the calipers. Previously it was at the like the parting line there in the center. Make sure when your brakes are getting worn, don't just add brake fluid because when you go to compress those pistons out, you're going to end up spilling brake fluid all out of that reservoir because the system is technically overfilled. Okay, brakes are done. The last thing I do is take it for a little test drive. First, when I get in the car, I'll have to hit the pedal two or three times. That helps clamp the pads on the rotors and you can feel the brake pressure build in your system. Then once I'm out on the road, I'll get up to about 60 miles an hour, slow down to like 15 or 20 miles an hour fairly quickly. Repeat that process two or three times, always coming to a rolling stop, making sure I'm not coming to a complete stop. That just heats up the pads and kind of gets them bedded into the rotors and gets everything clean and, and working together. But other than that, that's the whole job. It's really not that hard. This job was quoted at the Loop Center for $400 and for the brakes and rotors themselves, I think we spent like 80. So it saves a lot of money doing your own work as always. If you like this video or any of our other content on the Mason Dixon Acres channel, please feel free to like, subscribe with notifications and leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think or if you have any other questions. That's it.